Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to share with you tips on how to become a freelance web designer. So we are going to be covering quite a few things that I've learned over the years. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to choose a platform. So there's several ways to design websites out there, and I'm, and I'm sure you've seen some of these being advertised either on TV or on the internet. So just to name a few, there's Wix, Squarespace, Wibbly, uh, Drupal, Joomla, Dreamweaver. But I've made this whole process much easier to choose because the best platform to build your websites on is WordPress. Now, we are going to cover now the reasons why WordPress is the best platform. So the first thing is it's free. And also it comes along with themes that allow you to design any layout. When I mean layouts, I mean you can design the structure of the website and make it look however you want it to look. Uh, there's also some plugins which extends the functionality of your website. So let's say, for example, you design your website and you want to turn it into an e-commerce website. There are plugins that you can use to turn your normal website into an e-commerce website, membership websites, and so on. And uh, also, it's very easy to update. It's kind of like updating apps on your phone. So all you have to do is to log into your uh, dashboard and then uh, update all your plugins that way. Uh, the other reason is it is loved by Google. So Google makes the process of uh, indexing these websites much, much easier. There's also great support. There's a ton of videos out there that you can learn from. And I also have uh, quite a lot of videos that you can learn from uh, in terms of WordPress. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, one of the most important things here is full control. With WordPress, you absolutely, you absolutely get that. So when it comes to Weebly or Squarespace, these platforms are proprietary. So when you decide to move your website from these platforms, you leave with nothing because these platforms are owned by these companies. Whereas WordPress is open source, which means you can use these as you wish. Okay, so... Um, just to go into a bit of stats, when it comes to uh, market share, WordPress has the largest uh, market share. One in every four websites on the internet runs a website. So you can see that this is a very solid platform and it is very, very popular. In fact, there are so many companies that use these celebrities, universities, and also uh, corporations use WordPress. Okay, so now that we've covered the platform, which is WordPress, the next thing you want to do is to choose a page builder. So a page builder is a WordPress plugin that lets you easily build and edit grid-based layouts. So again, just like um, the uh, WordPress platforms, there are also quite a few page builders out there. Just to name a few, there's um, Elementor, there's uh, Divi, there's uh, Beaver Builder and so on. But the best one I recommend is Divi. I've used Divi for several years now and also I'm a uh, content creator over there at Elegant Themes. So I'm part of the team over there. We produce a lot of videos which help you design awesome looking websites. So this one is what I recommend. I use it for my own websites and I've used it when I used to freelance as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing, and this is hosting. So if you want to be a freelance web designer, ideally you want to be hosting your clients' websites. Now, the reason why is because it's very easy to maintain, and also uh, if you do it right, you can actually charge a bit extra on the hosting, which increases your profits. So there are several companies out there. In fact, there's hundreds of them that offer these web hosting services. Now, I want to discuss with you a few points which are very, very important when it comes to choosing a web hosting company. So first of all, it's support. Now, just to tell you a quick story, when I was a freelance web designer, uh, I chose a company which did not provide great support. Now, this gave me a lot of headaches because it meant I had to spend so much time trying to fix things uh, by myself and doing the research online. Now, if you're running a small business, time is money. You want to make sure that when something goes wrong on the server or something's going wrong with the website, you want to be able to contact um, the support team and get as much help as you can in a very short space of time. So support is very, very important when choosing a web hosting company. 
The second thing is reliability. Now, the last thing you want is um, your clients or your customers to be calling you saying my website is down. And this may lead into even more problems where you can potentially be sued by companies because the website is not up uh, most of the time. The next thing here is future proof. When you choose your web hosting company, make sure that you choose a company that also is developing with uh, the latest trends in the tech industry. For example, things like SSL and solid state drives is uh, very important. So these are the sort of things you need to uh, keep an eye on and make sure you choose the right company for this. Now, the company I use for my web hosting services is InMotion Hosting. They provide all these three things that we spoke about, and they're a great friendly team. And also, what makes InMotion Hosting great is the fact that behind the scenes, they have a team that are well-versed with WordPress. So if you have any WordPress issues, they will be able to help you out. I really recommend InMotion Hosting, and uh, if you do use my affiliate link in the show notes below, I will give you access to two of my courses absolutely free. So all you have to do is to sign up for InMotion Hosting using my affiliate link, and I will give you two of my courses free. The first one is WordPress Mastery. So this is a course which pretty much teaches you everything that you need to know about WordPress. And then the next one is Divi Blueprint 3. This is a course which, again, teaches you how to build awesome looking websites using Divi. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the portfolio. So becoming a great freelance web designer also comes with a great portfolio. This is how you showcase your work and show people what you're capable of doing. So it's very, very important for you to create your own portfolio. So there are places that you can um, upload your work. Uh, There's Dribble and also Behance. But I highly recommend that you have your portfolio on your own website. This is a bit more professional. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. And this is project management. When I started off designing websites, I used to struggle in this area because I did everything manually. So with a bit of research, I realized that there is tools out there that can help you manage your projects effectively. So one of these tools is called Trello. This is free and you can sign up straight away. Now, this allows you to manage all your projects and make sure that you set everything for each website that you're designing. So this could include images, notes from the client and so on. So I highly recommend setting up Trello to begin with. Now, later on, when you have more and more uh, clients, you can then move on to uh, something a bit more powerful like Basecamp. Now, with Basecamp, you are able to uh, invite your clients to the project and they can provide you with all the content they need uh, for the website as you're designing it. And also, it keeps tracks of um, all your communication, which is fantastic. Okay, so let's move on to the next item, which is business. So business is very, very important because obviously this is how you get paid. So making sure that you have these few things that we're going to discuss is very, very important moving forward. So let's start off with the first thing, which is invoicing. Now, invoicing is very critical because if you get it wrong, you won't get paid on time. And when it comes to managing your finances, everything will be all over the place. So having a proper invoicing system in place is very, very important. Now, the company I use is FreshBooks. I used it before and I still use it now. You can also do recurring payments, which is a very good feature. And you can also work out your taxes and so on. Let's move on to the next thing, uh, contract. Again, sometimes you may be very excited that you've landed a job and you may want to do it without having a contract. I've done this before, and to be honest, I regret it because without a contract, it's very difficult to run your business that way. Okay, let's move on to the next thing, which is your pricing strategy. This is where you need to decide whether you're going to charge per hour or it's going to be a flat fee. Now, I know there's a difference of opinion here, but I prefer to go for a flat fee depending on the type of project. So I would um, uh, speak to the client, for example, we go through the design brief and then work out how much time is going to be spent designing uh, this project. And then by doing it that way, you can then give them a fee. Now, you can also do this in such a way that let's say you're designing standard websites, maybe it's a six page, five page website, you could just say flat fee, this page or this type of website costs, say, for example, um, 1,000 pounds or uh, 500 pounds, 
depending on uh, you know what goes into it. Now, the next thing is recurring revenue. Now, you don't want a situation where you've designed your website and that's it, no money is coming in. Try and create a system where you have re recurring uh, revenue. Now, a few ways you could do this is by uh, providing hosting, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, by doing that, you can uh, ask your clients to pay you every month towards that. Uh, and then on top of that, you can also add your maintenance and support, which means you can help take care of their websites, update it when necessary. Again, you can give them a fee to this, which could be you know a, a monthly fee, you know, and you can charge uh, depending on how much time it takes you to do that work. Okay, let's move on to the next thing, which I think is very, very important. This is a make or break, and this is marketing. So when it comes to marketing, you need to make sure that you put yourself out there, let people know what you do, let people know what you're capable of, and um, by doing that, this increases awareness of your services. Now, a few ways you can do this is by going to uh, events. So you can go to events and do some networking. This is highly recommended because you get to uh, meet people, you get to um, exchange numbers and so on, and also see how other people are doing their freelance uh, work. And also, uh, the other thing that I also recommend is in your local area, you can go in and try and find uh, companies that you can uh, work with and tell them how you can improve their business using your services. The other thing that you can also do in your local area is to uh, go to your local events and also try and partner with, uh, let's say, companies like printers, because by doing that, uh, they can always recommend you every time they do a printing job. And you can also return the favor by also recommending these printing companies. So there's a lot you can do around here. You just have to be creative and just make sure that uh, you put yourself out there so people get to know what you can do. Okay, so the next area uh, I'm going to talk about here is social media. Now, pretty much everyone's on social media. So again, you need to make sure that you join groups or Facebook groups that uh, in your niche, uh, which is uh, web design, and uh, participate in those groups and be helpful. By doing that, um, you are raising your level, your skill level, and also letting people know what you can do. Uh, what you can also do is uh, create content. You can create videos, as I do. By creating videos, you're actually um, showing people what you can do, and also people get to see who they will be uh, potentially working with. So creating videos is very, very important. There are several platforms you can use. There's Facebook, there's YouTube, there's Instagram. So there are several ways you can become uh, creative on these platforms. But the most important thing here is to make sure that you're pushing your brand out there and you're letting people know what you're capable of doing. When it comes to the world of web design, it's very dynamic. Things are always changing. So you need to make sure that you keep learning. You don't want to be in a situation where you're lagging behind in terms of technology. You want to make sure that you know what's going on out there and you, you're always up to date so you can provide all these features and all these technologies to your existing customers. And finally, the one thing that is also um, very important here is to learn SEO. Okay, so these are my quick tips on how to become a freelance web designer. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe for more tips like these. Take care.